Hi everyone, it's Ms. Mayorga, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the last uh, small component for your game. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how to add your scoreboard and detect that your player touches the items and uh, you can add points. Um, and uh, that's what I'm gonna go over this one. After this, after this video, your game should be pretty complete in terms of having a just a basic functioning game. If you wanna add extra stuff like a windscreen or lose screen or add some sound, I'll be recording separate videos for those, okay? So let's get started. Before we get into our points, I just wanna review what you should have by now. Uh, I'll give me a second. I, I need to delete that. That was, okay. So before we get started, I want to review what you should have now. So at this point, your sprite should be moving and your uh, items should be looping, right? If you have platforms, the platform should be looping. If you don't have platforms, then you just don't have platforms, okay? But for those of you who do have platforms, we need to add one function here to detect um, that when the sprite touches the platform, that the sprite can't just like walk through the platform, that it gets stuck. So we're going to create a function for that. So go into only, so this is if you have uh, platforms. If you don't have platforms, you can just skip forward to the part where I talk about the scoreboard, okay? So here I'm gonna say player um, lands on platform or player touches platform, right? This is my comment, my function. I just need two small blocks here. I'm gonna call this player lands. And basically what I want to see is if the player, um, if the, if the platform touches the player, right? And it, if it does, then it should push it out of the way. So I'm going to use the displace block. And there's two platforms. So I'm actually going to use that twice, right? So platform one, displace player. In this case, um, my player is the target because I want the platform to push my player, not my player to push my platform. Otherwise, my platforms are going to go all over the place. So I just want the platform. If the player goes comes in contact, the platform just should just push it with it. So platform one, displace player. Platform two, displace player. Now, if you called your sprites something different, make sure you're calling them, you know, what you called them. I called mine platform one, platform two, and I called my alien just player. So that's what I'm using. Now I just need to call this function. So we need to go back up top to our draw function. Where's our draw function here? And we need to call our player lands function. Player lands. And now when I run my game, oops, I'm, I need to spell things correctly. When I run my game, uh, my player can't walk through the platforms. It gets pushed out of the way by the platforms. Ta-da! We did it. Okay, now we can go into the scoreboard. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the scoreboard, adding points. The very first thing you need to do is you need to create a variable to keep track of your points so or your score. So go to the variables drawer. And remember, you can pause this video at any point. So if, it, if, I'm, my, if I'm putting the code too fast on my screen, just pause the video, take a look at it, and then continue. <clears throat> create your variable here. To create a variable, we're going to use this first uh, block, var x gets blank. All right, variable something gets something. So we're gonna call this variable score. And at the start of my game, I want the score to be zero. Depending on how you're making your game, you might make the score something else, okay? So var score gets zero. It's gonna tell you it's defined, but you haven't called it in your program, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna use it in just a second, so that triangle should go away. Now that we created our variable, we can do stuff with it. So let's go all the way down, all the way down. Um, and we're going to go to functions and we're going to create two functions. The first function is going to change the score. It's going to detect when your player collects items and it'll, uh, do two things. And then the next function is going to show the score. Okay. So we actually need to make two functions here. Let's go ahead and do the first one. I'm going to just make a comment here. So this is going to be collect items and show score. Okay. So my first function is going to be called collect items. Collect items. You can call it collect coins, collect hamburgers, collect uh, flies, whatever, whatever your sprite is. I'm just calling items, items as a general name, right? Now, 
when I collect an item, actually, how do you know when your sprite has collected an item? What do you have to look for? When your sprite touches the item, right? If your sprite touches the item. If your sprite touches the item, what should happen? Two things should happen. You should change the score and you should reset the item. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. I have three items, so I need three if statements. If you only have one item, then you only need one if statement. If you have two, then you need two, okay? But I wanna check if my sprite is touching item. So I will need if sprite is touching, my player is touching item one. Then I want my score to increase. So to do that, I need to go to variables and careful here. We're not defining, we're not declaring another variable. We're simply changing the variable that we have. So do not use these first two blocks, okay? Use the third block, x gets blank, assign a variable. So grab that and we're gonna say score gets, and for my first item, that's gonna be a positive point. So I'm gonna add the plus, score plus one. This is saying your score is your old score plus one. So when my player touches item one, the score needs to increase and I need to call the function to set item one to reset item one. So I need to grab the little call function block, drop it in there, and I called that function set item one. All right, so going back up, here are the functions that I had used, right? It's looping to help me loop my platforms and stuff. I'd created a function that resets item one, resets item two, resets item three. So right now I'm focusing on item one. So when my player touches item one, change the score and reset the item. Now I do the same thing for item two and item three. All right, if you don't have item two, item three, then you don't need to do this part. But if you do, then make sure you do it. All right, uh, player is touching, player is touching item two, and I'm just gonna drag this one here as well. Player is touch, oops, that's already there. Item three, and I need score. Remember, it's the third one. You're not creating a new variable. You're just changing one that already exists. All right, so it should be score, score. My second item is also gonna be a plus. Um, if you have different items worth different points, then you would change the value there. So for example, if you have an item that's worth one point, you would do plus one. If the item is worth five points, you would do plus five. For me, I'm just doing plus one for those two items. And if you have an item that's worth negative points, then you would do minus. Score minus one, or two or three, or whatever you're going to use, okay? Oh, I forgot to set my items. Don't forget to set your items. Set. I need to set both of them. Set item two, set item three. All right, so I just repeated the same process for each item that I have in my game. Now that I have this, I can call this function and I should see, I'm not gonna see the score yet because I haven't made the scoreboard, but I should see that the items do reset. So let's go ahead and call this function. Up here, collect items. And now I can run my program, and every time I touch a star, it should reset. It should disappear and start over. Yay! Oh my gosh, our game is almost complete. We just need our scoreboard. I'm excited to see everyone's games come together. All right. Let's get into our points. Let's get our score on the screen. So we're going to create one more function. Going back down. And we're going to call this function show score. So it shows the score. Show score. Mm -mm -mm. Now, uh, for here, we just basically want to create our text that's going to show our score. So I'm going to use uh, fill color, text size, and the text block. Right? If you want to get fancy with it and add some strokes and some stroke weights and uh, align it to a different place and a font, right, that's up, up to you. I'm just going to do the basics which is going to be choose a color. And my color is going to be white because of my background. Uh, choose a size and I'm going to go with 20. You can always change that once you see it. And my text block, which is, where is it, where is it? Right here. Now here's something that we're going to do a little bit different. 
um, in this first space where you would put the phrase that you want on your screen, you're going to use this little plus operator. Where's my plus operator? Here. Because we want the screen to show two things. We want the screen to show the word score and we want it to show like the number, the actual score, the variable. So we need to tell the computer, hey, for the first thing, quotation marks, capital S, C-O-R-E, score, colon, space, quotation marks. Remember, quotation marks indicates a string, text, right, words. So the computer will print out exactly what's inside the quotation marks. In the second spot, we're just going to type the word score, referring to the variable that we created. All lowercase, right, because our when we created our variable, we called it score, and it was all lowercase. And then try a position. I'm going to go ahead and go with 15 and uh, 25. So it appears here in the top left corner right here. Uh, and we're going to call our program, call our function so that we can actually see it. Now, there's a, something important for when we call this function. All of these blocks are draw tools. OK, everything else we have in a program is a sprite. So we don't want the sprites to cover up our draw, our drawing, our text. To avoid the sprites covering up our text, we actually have to call this function after the draw sprites block. This is the one function that we're calling after the draw sprites. So grab that and put it after the draw sprites. Otherwise, if you put it up here, the computer's going to do everything and then draw the sprites. So your text is actually going to get covered by your background. Right? We don't want that to happen. We want everything to get drawn first, and then the score should be drawn at the end. So it's on top of everything. All right, here we go. Our game should work. Yay! It's going up, going up, going up, and there's, it goes down, it goes down, oh no. All right, there it is, but your score should be changing. If you don't like where your score is, you can go back and change the position, you can change the size, maybe it's too small for you, you want a different font, you can look for fonts, and you can change the font here, All right? So that would be, uh, where is it, text? Text font, where's text font? Right here, text font, right? You can choose what font you want. You can Google um, code.org fonts. I don't know if they are, yeah, All right. Here are these, these. Um, Georgia, Times New Roman. I feel like you could also look up other ones. You can kind of see what they look like here. There's Georgia, there's Times New Roman, Garamond. Oh, this one looks cool for a game. Courier New Monsters. All right, I wonder if I copy this. Let's we'll see how it works. Again, a lot of this is just trying it out. I don't know. There it is. Nice. That looks cool, right? That looks more of like a game. Cool. So I'll keep it as courier new. Yay. If you want to change the color, you can change the size, right? You would add that in there. You want to add some stroke, make it a little bit more bold, right? Add a stroke, make it white. Comes out a little more bold. You know, a lot of things that you can change around. But at this point, you should have a basic functioning game. Your player collecting items and your scoreboard detecting the points, right? Showing the points. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. In the next couple of videos, I will show you how to add a lose screen and a win screen, as well as how to add sound. All right, and if, you, if there's anything else you want me to show you, just send me a message on Schoology, and I will try to put something together. If you need any help, come to office hours, send me a message on Schoology, or ask me in class. All right, goodbye, everybody.